Hey guys, it's Tracy, me and my flip-flop Santa and my cheesy twinkling lights are back again and I am sharing some wreath inspiration with you as well as some hand painting. Now I love to design wreaths, I also like to hand paint and I love to share it here on my channel with my community. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started and let me show you the beautiful wreaths and hand painted signs to go along with them. Okay, what I'm starting with is one of these reindeer forms from the Dollar Tree. And if you cannot find one of them from the Dollar Tree, I have seen them at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. So what I did is I just took my heat tool and that uh, spatula and I just, you know, heated it up to get those antlers off as well as the nose because I'm going to paint those a little different color. So what I'm doing is giving it a couple of coats of this uh, brown paint. It is Milk Chocolate by Americana. And then for the antlers, I am using Antique White. Uh, it is also an Americana brand. And But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and fill in those holes so that I don't have, you know, those holes. Uh, I just use some spackle just to fill those in. And then I give those two coats of that. All right, so I'm using this brown color and my fan brush. I'm gonna be using just the end of it. And uh, uh, the brown color is sable brown, also an Americana color. <laughs> you know that I'm Americana paint color fan. Uh, and so I just use uh, just a the end of that, a uh, fan brush just to give it a faux plaid pattern. So I just make my stripes like this down and then I'll go back and do them uh, horizontal. So I'm going to use a number 10 flat paintbrush and some uh, black paint and some clean water and I'm going to be doing some black shading around my reindeer and so I just dip half of my brush in paint the other half in clean water and then I blend on that blue paper towel and then I just go around the edges just adding some shading and I like uh, on these darker colors like this I like to add black because I feel that it just gives it a depth to it that I like for my projects then for my antlers what I do is I use some milk chocolate paint to do the shading as well with that number 10 flat paintbrush and uh, just go around that and just add some depth and character and cuteness Now for the fun part for me is to add cute little whimsical faces and I do this by just adding uh, just well actually just drawing two ovals and I like the more slanted or the more uh, almond shape and so first I do a pencil then I go back and draw it out with Sharpie. This is just my process, guys. Every painter finds their own way. I'm just kind of sharing what works for me. Then I use a round brush that has a, a more pointed tip on it. And so then I just fill in the ovals with my paintbrush and just make my little eyes like this. And then that round, uh, rounded point of the brush, I just kind of can just get in there and just really make those eyes as big as I want them. And so then uh, now I'm gonna use a, a smaller flat paintbrush and some white paint and just give some highlights kind of to the top and just around like maybe the face a bit. As you hear me say, most all of the time, the beauty is in the details. And you can just see right here, just by adding different paint and different highlights, just doodling and adding all the fun touches just really brings this little guy to life. And so then next I'm going to add some cheeks. I like the more rectangle up and down cheeks, but everyone has their own, uh, you know, way of doing things. I'm using barn red, also a stencil brush, and uh, it kind of makes it a little wispy. And so then I kind of dab off a little bit of the brush 
on the paper towel because I'm not quite sure how dark I want it. And so I just start stippling that on until I like the look. Now on camera, it looks really, really bright. But then once this paint dries, you can see right there how it just turns muted. That's just the what this, the paint does. So I'm just adding some highlights and then I'll go back with my little detailing brush and add some lines that gives it the really whimsical look that I love for my projects. And so again, if uh, you're looking for a small detailing brush, you know, a liner brush is what you're going to look for. And then, um, like I've had this liner brush for many, many years. Uh, some of the bristles have uh, fallen out. And so that's the key is just to find a brush that has just a few bristles. And that gives you these little, uh, you know, little bitty lines like that. All right. So then I go back and add, of course, my black shop and marker because I just love to outline all of my uh, projects because I really feel that that just makes it pop. And then what I'll do is you use this little ultra fine sharpie marker just go around and just adding a little bit more detail just to make it pop and just add what I like and then I'm going to add my you know my little squiggly lines of my little doodles I just love this and that, as you can see like I said you could just just with a little paint you just bring this little character to life. I'm also going to add some eyelashes as well as a fun mouth and all of that good stuff. For his nose, what I'm going to do is um, I took the nose off so that I could paint, but I wanted to move the nose up a bit. And instead of just painting it red, I'm going to be adding some glitter. So I'll show you how to do that next. Before I put the nose on, I wanted to draw a mouth and I just do that with a black Sharpie marker. And so then I use the nose uh, as a guide to help me, you know, figure out the placement of how I wanted the mouth. And I just did that with my black Sharpie marker. And then uh, I have to do it. I love to add black and white splatter paint to my project. So that's what I do. And my method is with a stiff brush. I just uh, run the, the stick over the brush toward my body and then I uh, do black and then I go back over it and do white. And so then for the nose, uh, what I did is I just painted, give it, gave it a coat of red paint and this is primary red. And then uh, it dried really, really quick. So I did have to go back and use some Mod Podge and that glitter color I'm using is Garnet. It's a Martha Stewart color. And so then to, uh, you know, give something for my glitter to stick to, I just used Mod Podge. And so I'm using a uh, piece of parchment paper or a paper plate would work as well uh, just to act as a funnel so that I can put the excess glitter back into my my little jar my little tube and so then I gave everything a coat of this varnish that I like to use and uh, then I glue everything down just with E6000 as well as some hot glue just to make sure that everything is secure and then to end it I just put a little swoosh of white paint on the top of the nose. For the little Merry Christmas sign, I had one of these plaques uh, from that wood pile pack that I get from Hobby Lobby. I had already painted a bunch of them um, off white, but um, I wanted to share this with you just to say, just to encourage you, because yes, I do mess up. So I was going to uh, write Merry Christmas, and I did what I encourage you all to do is when before I get started, you know, air draw it just to make sure everything is going to you know work out but no uh, it wasn't I did not my got my letters off so I ended up having to go back 
repaint it. And so then um, I just want to encourage you that, yeah, mistakes are going to happen. And so I, that's, I'm just painting a sign and that's what I did. I just went over it, repainted it. And so then now I'm going to show you how I'm going to paint it. Uh, and it turns out correctly the second time. So then now I'm going to add some shading with my favorite brown, which is milk chocolate, and then a flat paintbrush. I just dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, and then I blend on a paper towel, and that just blends the paint so that I can just, you know, shade it around my sign. And so then I'm going to add some green. I'm going to add a background. So I was kind of, you know, my happy accident turned out great because I wanted to add a little uh, background. Uh, and I do that just with some uh, holly green, Christmas uh, color green. It's holly green by Americana and my fan brush and just go and make my faux plaid pattern what I like to do. And so then I'm going to add some black shopper maca because I like the way that it makes my signs stand out. And then uh, once I do that, I'm like, yeah, I want to add a little bit of shading, uh, you know, on one side of those plaid, uh, faux plaid, you know, my background, because I just feel that it just adds a little bit of country cuteness to it. And so then now it's like, okay, girl, it's time for you to start again. So I'm using a number two flat paintbrush and I uh, like air draw it out, you know, again and figure out where I need to start my letters and where my C of my Christmas, like, you know, needs to be so that I can kind of cattywampus put my letters. And so guys, I know that there are, you know, lots of people that will reach out and say, you know, hey, do you do any kind of painting uh, tutorials or anything like that? Honestly, the way that I just, I, I do my letters all different. And so like I have mentioned before, I have a uh, found some free fonts that you can download uh, from defont.com. You can and install them on your computer and then that's how you can practice and so that's how honestly that is how I learned just by watching the people that I liked uh, kind of following them and practice 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 that is you know what I've been doing and you can do it too so I love my happy dots and I am just taking my brush just doing you know the little happy dots then once that's all dry what I'll do is just to add uh, just to make my letters pop I'll go back and add some black sharpie marker along one side of it just to not really give it a shadow but just kind of make it stand out a little bit then once all of that is dried then I will take my little liner brush and just give it uh, each happy dot a comma or just a little white highlight just to make my letters pop and just uh, you know have them bring them out and then I did add some paint splattering to my sign and for whatever reason my camera didn't film it but you've seen me paint splatter many times. I added the black and also added the white. I'm starting with a 14 inch wire form as well as 21 inch burlap deco mesh from Hobby Lobby and then uh, some tan pipe cleaners. Now I like to do this method because I usually put a sign on my wreaths and I like to give it a little bit of cushion. So I uh, just go across and I secure the pipe cleaner, then I go across, secure another one, and then I usually make about eight inch poofs 
on the in the center I go around and kind of like where those bars are I just kind of use that as my guide and then keep going around and then once I get to the place then uh, you know like to where I started then I go back and I just drop down to the outer two rings and then I make between nine and ten inch poofs again I do have some wreath basics tutorials that show you shows you this in real time in slow motion if this was a little bit fast for you I will put a link in the description box as well as in the iCard so then now I have 12 pipe cleaners to put deco mesh in all right so then for my 10 inch deco mesh I'm going to be cutting uh, six of each of these uh, they all all of this mesh came from Hobby Lobby and so this one right here I was going to use but then later on I end up changing it to a different one so I'll show you that in a bit all right so as I said this burlap came from Hobby Lobby and uh, I cut it at 14 inches in and since it was woven with that little white in it, I tried to go in between that. And I find that I like that much better because I didn't have white everywhere. And so then this uh, burlap with red also at 14 inches. Now, guys, to make my cruffles, this is what I do every single time when I make these. I bend over one end uh, and then I bend over the other end. I gather it in the middle and then I clamp it. And so then I'm doing the same thing. This is my favorite way to make a base like this so it depend I would just change up my 10 inch mesh and then I crisscross them like that and the little X pattern and then that's what's going to go into my pipe cleaner all right this snowball mesh also came from my Hobby Lobby my favorite store and uh, do the same thing and so I cut six of each of these out uh, so that I would have I'm going to alternate them uh, one bundle and then the other bundle into my burlap uh, mesh wreath and so then doing the same thing I just bend over one in bend over the other end gather it in the middle and then clamp it and so that's how I make my uh, cruffles guys Okay, as I mentioned, I have 12 pipe cleaners. So since I have six of each of these bundles, I'm going to do a zigzag pattern uh, and uh, put one bundle in one and then the other burlap bundle in the other one. And so just to help keep myself straight, I just put one in and then now I will go on to the second one. Every wreath maker has their own way of doing things. I am just here to encourage you to share my tips of what I do for my wreaths and uh, what has worked for me. And so I'm so grateful and thankful that you are here. And so then this is how uh, full my wreath is looking so far, but we're not finished because I am also going to be using this uh, cream and burlap also came from Hobby Lobby. This is in place of that other um, red with the burlap that when I just, it was too much red. And so I cut these at 16 inches because what I'm gonna do is only use one of those I'm using the same technique I bend over the ends and then I gather it in the middle clamp it and then I'm gonna put this like in the holes like I consider like in between the the two deco mesh I have like a hole and so then uh, to add some fullness what I do is I put a pipe cleaner around two of those rings and then I put this burlap with the cream mesh in there and then that just adds the fullness all the way around so I ha don't have any any gaps in between my deco mesh of where I have it and so there um, it just makes a very full wreath so now we're gonna head on and let me show you the ribbon choices these are the cute ribbons I'm going to be putting together how I have them laying out is how I'm going to put them into the bundle okay this set right here uh, the one and a half inch came from Hobby Lobby that's the polka dot and then the check came from Michaels and then I cut the two and a half inch at 13 inches and the one and a half inch at 12 inches because I like the way it lays with the just being a little bit shorter so then I make my bundles like this I do kind of the same methods every wreath uh, process these both of these came from Michaels and so as I said I like to you know I take the extra time just to do this so that I can just put them into the wreath these um, came from craft outlet and that um, 
striped one, I, I had that in my stash. I'm not quite sure where I got that one from, but the brown check uh, came from Michael's. Okay, so then I use my little tiny attacher, my little stapler, just to make bundles like that. So then now I'm ready to go. I'm also tying some uh, knots of raffia, and that is going to go into one set of the ribbon. So then I just determine which one is going to have the bundle with the three in there, and then I'm just putting the uh, raffia in there. And so then I stay with that throughout the wreath and so then what I'm going to do is alternate these two right here I like to form the re uh, ribbons like that and then I will use the next one to go in the other one and then I do a zigzag pattern uh, all the way around the wreath until I get all of this beautiful ribbon into this wreath and so then um, what I decided to do also is add some jingle bells we cannot have a cute burlap country reindeer wreath without some jingle bells and these 30 millimeter jingle bells came from Hobby Lobby and so then this is how it looks in there it's just so cute and I'm just so in love with the way that this wreath turned out and to attach the reindeer sign to my wreath, I use these one inch cable ties. I just attach them to the back with pipe cleaners and then I thread them on the wreath with a, an upholstery needle. And then this is how I cover the back with some placemats from Hobby Lobby during the fall season. And then I also use a grapevine wire to make a hanger. Then uh, I'm adding some berries and some greenery. And uh, I think all this came from Hobby Lobby. I um, think that's where I got it from. I've had it in my stash. Anyway, I just pulled pieces of that apart, uh, put a steel pick on the end, and then just included it in the wreath. And it turned out adorable. I just love the way that it turned out. I'm so happy and just, you know, very grateful that I have these gifts to share with so many sweet burlap wreaths. I am taking it back to the basics of how I make my rustic burlap base. Guys, I buy the burlap on the bolt and I just use my rotary cutter just to cut off six inches and I cut off 10 strips of these six inch pieces of burlap. Now guys, to get the frayed edges, what I do is I go outside First of all, I always wear a mask when I am working with cut burlap. Uh, and so I go outside and I just take my hands and run it across it so that I get the frayed edges. And that mask kind of helps with, uh, you know, me from preventing me from breathing the fibers because it is extremely dusty. So guys, what I'm doing here to make my rustic uh, bases here with the frayed edges is I'm just taking pieces of pipe cleaner left over from previous wreath videos and I just secure it uh, on the two inner wires and then I start making a bubble and so since this is uh, you know just a shorter you know strip from the cutoff burlap uh, what I do is I make three bubbles and then I go to the uh, second like the inner ring and then I make another bu bubble and so then I have you know to tie it off there in the you know at the point where so that it doesn't slip out from those wires and so I got my some questions on my last video the gingerbread video and so I just wanted to clarify that I use the wire to help hold a lot of my burlap you know that's cut off like this since I'm cutting it off from the bolt you know it does take a little bit of time to get it like this but guys the end result I am so happy with so I just continue to you know just take the pipe cleaner and I thread it through you know just kind of like you're threading a needle kind of thing you know back and forth back and forth and then I just I go underneath the wire and you know just tie it off like that to secure it in place then I start making my bubbles and I just pull it through the in between the wires uh, so that it makes the bubble and then I just kind of push it up as you know what I can and what I usually average is two strips 
per each section. So like these, this wire is a 14 inch wire frame from the Dollar Tree. Those are my favorite, those, especially those gold or brown ones. I love those. Those are my absolute favorite. And so I'm just showing you here on the back. It just, it really, it, do, it, it really doesn't look that pretty, but I'm going to cover it up anyway with one of those placemats that I like to get from the Dollar Tree. And I mean, uh, from Hobby Lobby. I'm sorry. I get the placemats from Hobby Lobby. And so then here I've got 10, you know, strips on here and I just tie it off and uh, you know it looks really pretty so I'm showing you here the back because I did have a request to show the back it's not that pretty but it's okay because I just make sure that everything is tied off and uh, the more that I work with it it does kind of you know get a little bit more frayed all right so these are the homespun fabrics that I'm using in this country Christmas wreath and so I get all of my uh, homespun usually from Hobby Lobby. I have been fortunate to find some at Walmart as well, but there is an online shop called Jubilee Fabric that has beautiful homespun fabrics and you can get uh, so many different designs. If you're not familiar with homespun fabric, it is just a woven fabric that you can see on both sides. It's really used in a lot of primitive country decorating and so I just you know love it for my country crafts so what I'm doing is I'm taking a, my just my pinking shears and just cutting little notches and then I'm tying uh, or actually ripping them to give the ragged edges and so then I cut them in about 13 inch strips and so then I'm just tying them on to the wreath underneath that wire just using that wire and so I put a ton of homespun ribbon on here or fabric rather and so then once I get to a certain point once I get you know I kind of alternate all of this ribbon or this fabric and so then I'm going to be making some bows and using my safety pins that I rusted up using my friend Linda Faith Chick 777 here on YouTube. I used her uh, rusting technique. If you are, are looking for uh, the video, look in the description box because that's where you will find the link. Okay, guys. Also, what I did is I wanted my uh, fabric to be a little bit more stiff. So I pulled out my Stiffen Quick spray and I just sprayed it just spritzed it you know just a little bit just to give it a little form because you know this is fabric and so it is a little limp and so I just want it to you know have a little bit of form to my uh, fabric and you can get stiff and quick on Amazon I do have it listed in my Amazon store you can get it at any craft store in the fabric section Walmart Hobby Lobby Michaels Joann's any of that that but I absolutely love using Stiff and Quick. It's just a stiffening spray that I can use to make limp fabric a little bit more stiffer. All right, so then I continue to just make little knots and then uh, my rusty safety pins, I am just using those and just, I just thread it through just right there on the top. Uh, look, oh my goodness, I am just so in love with this wreath. And again, all of this homespun fabric came from Hobby Lobby. Okay, so I have these 30 mm uh, jingle bells that I got from Hobby Lobby, my favorite store. And uh, so I'm just taking more of those rusty safety pins and just taking those, uh, you know, jingle bells and actually putting them <laughs> just straight there on the uh, on the wreath. And then here is just a little real-time listen. For my tree, I am using one of the tree forms from the Dollar Tree. And I, you know, cut off the jute string. And then I am using Hunter Green acrylic paint 
gave it a coat of that. Now here I'm just covering the hole or filling the hole rather with spackle, but I didn't even need to do that because my Rusty Star covered it anyway. So I gave this a coat of the Hunter Green uh, acrylic paint and actually this paint was pretty thick, so all I needed was one coat. Then for the trunk of the tree, I just gave it uh, a couple of coats of cinnamon brown. That's the color that I use. Now to give the um, stripes, I use antique white acrylic paint and my fan brush and for whatever reason I did not get it on film so I apologize about that but you've seen me use my fan brush a lot in other painted videos. Uh, I do kind of you know I just use just a little portion of my fan brush and just go down just to give it the stripe look so then now I'm just adding some squiggles because y'all know I love my doodles and my squiggles and so I'm just using a small liner brush and just going around and giving it some squiggles then I'm gonna go back and add some shading I just use a flat paintbrush and my favorite method of shading which is dip half of my brush in paint the other half in clean water I blend on a paper towel and then I go around the edges of the trunk of the tree then I go back and add shading around the tree which I usually do first but I thought I would just be happy with just the squiggles but I'm like nah once I shaded that trunk of the tree I'm like yeah I want to shade around the tree itself <laughs> so I go back and do that for my paint splatters, I just use some of that antique white acrylic paint. Now the Americana antique white looks uh, more taupe color or like a brown color to me, uh, but I love that look. And so then I go and finish the squiggles around the trunk of my tree. Now to uh, give it a finish, I like to use this varnish. Uh, you can get it at any craft store or I do have it listed in my Amazon shop as well. So for the top of the tree, I have one of these rusty stars from Hobby Lobby in the miniature ornament section and it is beveled so I wanted, wanted it to be flat so I just took my uh, my mallet and just you know uh, just smashed it down so that it would be flat so to decorate my tree I have some of these pit berry uh, pit berry garland from the Dollar Tree and so then I just start and just wrap it around my tree you know just to give it uh, just holding it around you know just gathering it around the tree not holding it but you know what I'm you know what I'm talking about just kind of wrapping it around the tree that was the word that I was looking for and then also later I go back and I add uh, some because it wasn't kind of holding in place the way that I wanted it to so I took just little strips of burlap uh, fabric work as well and just kind of glued different places in the back of the tree just to hold that pitberry garland into place so then to add, uh, you know, security for my Rusty Star, I just used some E6000 as well as my hot glue and then a clamp to, you know, keep it in place while it dries. All right, so I have a little miniature uh, grapevine wreath that I just clipped apart and so what I'm I want to wrap it around the tree to give it a more woodland woodsy feel because you know I'm country at heart and I love all of the grapevine and twine and twigs and all of that stuff so of course every grapevine wreath is different so just kind of had to work it around just I really wanted it to just kind of wrap around the tree but you know I just carefully played with it and eventually I got the look that I wanted. So here is where I'm showing that I just took little pieces of burlap because that's what I had accessible to me and uh, I just glued small pieces of that on the back just to kind of hold those uh, the grapevine and the pit berries in place okay guys so I wanted to add a bit more rustic to this and kind of look like twine so what these are these are leftover from uh, the branches or whatever you call them that my 
Pitberry garlands come on. Now, you know I use Pitberries in a lot of my wreaths. And so they come on these garlands. And what I do is I, uh, you know, untwist the Pitberries and I take them off of these uh, branches or you know these garlands right here and then I'm like those are too good to throw away so I use these in my country style wreaths and so it kind of gives the look of grapevine uh, without all the twigs and all of that stuff and so I get the best luck of getting my pitberry garlands at Hobby Lobby especially either in the seasonal uh, they usually have pitberry garlands during the seasons as well as uh, in the garland section they have them uh, one that I like to use the white ones with the white berries that I like to use for everyday wreaths so I'm using some canvas ribbon as well as some burlap but they're each one uh, one and a half inches wide okay so the canvas ribbon is not wired so that's why I decided to kind of layer it with the burlap just to give it some form so I'm going to hand letter O Christmas tree and I'm using my number two flat paintbrush to do this uh, it is my favorite paintbrush to use for hand lettering now you could uh, also use stickers you can use your Cricut or a die cutting machine you can use a black sharpie marker or print something out on your computer to give you a banner or something to attach to your tree or anything that you're doing so uh, the Lord has given me the gift of hand lettering so I've perfected my hand lettering by a lots of practice guys lots and lots of practice I do get questions about hand lettering all of the time and for those that are interested I would suggest uh, finding a font that you like uh, downloading it onto your computer and then uh, you know printing out different letters printing out different sayings and practice 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 because you know practice makes perfect and so I do have some free fonts that I have uh, you know put a list together that you can see over on my blog there is a link for that in my link tree if that is something that you're interested in Okay, so then I will just uh, go ahead and continue to hand letter O Christmas tree. I actually uh, also did my happy dots because I love my happy dots. And as I always say, the beauty is in the details. And then once I finish uh, doing all of that, then I go back and add a uh, red shadow to my letters just to make them pop. Once all of my paint is dry, then I go back and add just a comma or just a highlight to my happy dots. I really feel that it just really brings out the wording and makes the word and my letters pop. For my banner, uh, what I'm doing is just layering that canvas ribbon on top of the burlap and it's just because that burlap ribbon is uh, wired and my canvas ribbon is not. So I want something that has a little form and then I just use my hot glue just to give it, uh, just tack it in different places in the banner so that it gives the rays look like what a, a flowing banner looks like across the tree. And so then I dovetail the ends by just pinching it together and giving it a V cut, kind of like what the banner usually looks like. And then to attach the banner to my wreath, what I'm using are a couple of those safety pins. And so I just kind of position it on the wreath uh, across the wooden tree where I feel that it looks nice. 
and I am very, very happy with the end result. All right, so then uh, what I do to attach my tree to, m to my wreath, what I use are these one inch cable ties and pipe cleaners, and then I attach it to the frame so that everything is nice and secure. And then I use these, uh, or, or one of these upholstery needles to thread the pipe cleaners through my deco mesh or my burlap whatever you know wreath i'm doing and i got this tip from a fellow wreath maker and i wanted to pass that along if that is uh, something that you struggle with with getting pipe cleaners or something through your thick burlap or deco mesh those upholstery needles work great and i found this set at uh, walmart all right so then um, now i'm just putting all of the finishing touches on and uh, i did have to kind of position or kind of play with the banner you know to get the right placement but it, the end result i absolutely love and i hope that you do too to finish it off, I just made a just a simple bow with a couple of strands of raffia and glued that there in the center of my rusty star. So I have this greenery as well as more red pit berries from Habe Labe, and uh, I just cut those off. I did use my steel picks machine to put the small picks on the end so that I could glue them in between the layers of the burlap to give it a more secure hold. What I started with is one of these beware signs from the Dollar Tree, but they seem to have different signs oblong like this throughout the year for different holidays. And what I did is I just took um, some brown craft paper that I had on a roll and I cut it off and then cut it down to size so that I could cover up the back. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. And it just makes me feel better just having this covered. And so then what I'm going to do is, uh, give this uh, two coats of just white acrylic paint. Uh, it's just what I had on hand and just pulled. And uh, so I'm just using my very large brush. Uh, I think I got this big brush from Walmart and uh, just giving it two coats of the white acrylic paint. Then uh, I'm going to give it a background and I'm gonna use this paint color called drizzle gray I'm also going to use my fan brush and I like to uh, do backgrounds with my fan brush I just dip just a part of it not the whole thing I just dip several bristles in it and just kind of go back and forth making some lines now I have been doing this for a few years so I kind of eyeball it but I know there if you're just starting out you can mask it off with painters tape or draw a line or something like that but I'm just kind of quickly showing you um, I have so many sweet friends that are encouraged by just you know watching paint and find it entertaining and so as you can see it's not perfect I don't want it to be I just want it to be very you know kind of um, aloof and whimsical so then now I'm going to add some brown shading I feel that the shading kind of brings things out and it's just something that I like to do to bring out my painting and so what I do is I have a half inch flat paintbrush I have some clean water and the color of paint I like to shade with is uh, acrylic paint uh, milk chocolate and uh, so I just go along the outer uh, like around the edges as well as in between I'll go in uh, kind of like the underside of the stripes just to give it some shading also if you haven't seen me shade my projects before what I do is I dip half of my brush in the paint and then the other half in clean water I blend on a paper towel I like to use the shop towels from the automotive section like at Walmart you can get them at Sam's and other uh, you know other stores like that but they're a little bit thicker than your just your usual paper towel but I'm just kind of sharing uh, different tips that work for me and uh, products that I use 
Now I'm going to move on uh, to start my tree and I'm going to use this paint color holly green and that same fan brush that I've uh, washed out and have it ready. And then what I do is I just take part of the brush, dip it in the paint and just kind of fan it out and wispy it as I go along down the uh, side of the um, of this board right here. I'm kind of just like feathering. That's what I kind of, um, you know, consider it. And so since this tree is oblong, I kind of was thinner at the top and then I kind of, um, you know, come out a little more. I'm making my strokes a little bit uh, more wider as I get down to like the bottom of the tree. And so then, um, it just honestly it really depends on what kind of mood I'm in when I'm painting sometimes I paint back and forth like the left side the right side the left side the right side but for this particular project that day um, I guess because I wanted to make sure that I got the uh, right side of my tree correct and uh, so this just goes to show you the difference in the paints uh, you know even though I shook it up and I'm putting the wispiness uh, on the left hand side it was kind of a little more translucent or a little more opaque so I don't know if it was something in the paint um, underneath it or maybe what the boards made of I don't know I was just a little puzzled that day which it's not a problem at all it just goes to show you that not all paints are correct or, or you know all not all paints are consistent I guess and so that uh, I just kind of went with it and just kept going over it until I got the uh, coverage that I was looking for and so I just make sure that I have that feathered uh, look on the edges of the tree because this is like a cedar tree or a fir tree or something like that I don't really know my Christmas trees too good uh, shame on me but I just kind of go over it until I get the coverage that I'm looking for and I'm okay that it's not totally covered because that's not what I'm looking for okay so then once this is dry I let my green dry completely then I'm just taking some white and just doing the same thing I'm going uh, around with my paintbrush my fan paintbrush and just kind of making some swooshes or some fans feathers out that way uh, this just kind of brings out some highlights it kind of gives some character to the tree and also like some um, you know definition to for the person to know that that this is a Christmas tree and then I'll just use a uh, that same half inch brush and some milk chocolate paint and just paint on the bottom of the trunk so then to give more highlights I'm using this acrylic paint color kiwi and it's more of a green color and then I have a number two liner paintbrush and then I just go and not as much as I did with the white and with the fan brush because I'm using a liner brush which is very thin and I just go along and just give it some green streaks just to uh, you know bring out some more character and fun parts of the tree. Once my tree is completely dry, I will do the same thing with the shading around the outside of the tree, just with that half inch flat paintbrush and my paint, dipping uh, half of it in paint, the other half in clean water, and then I blend on a paper towel. Then I just go around the uh, outside of the tree as well as the trunk, just to give it some depth and dimension. Once my sign is completely dry, then I'll go back and use my uh, fine Sharpie marker and just go around the edges and in between the trees just to give it some doodling. I just love to do this for my painted projects because I really feel that it makes 
the paint it projects pop now um you know sometimes less is more so i just kind of gauge as far i don't want to like overdo it and depending on how big my sign is will depend on if i use my fine sharpie marker or if i use my ultra fine sharpie marker but most of the time i use my fine sharpie marker because i like that thickness of uh you know what the marker is and so then uh next i am going to do my favorite i'm so old school i know but i just love how paint splattering makes my projects look i'm country through and through down to the core and so i love to paint splatter my projects uh, i do black first and then i do white i will leave a video of how i paint splatter my projects if you would like to check that out Now I'm gonna do some hand lettering uh, using this color of red. It, this is primary red. I'm using a quarter inch flat paintbrush and what I'm doing here is just kind of air drawing it just to make sure that I have enough room. I do highly recommend that. I kind of just take my paintbrush like I'm going to uh, you know, paint it and then I just make sure that it doesn't get uh, you know that it's not too crammed and so I just take my time and uh, I'm going to spell out the words Mary or the word Mary and uh, as I've mentioned before this is some God-given talent I have been hand lettering like this for many years and I only say this to you to encourage you if it's something that you want to do to learn how to hand letter uh, there is a free font called gel dotica that that does have like the happy dots that I like to do you can download it for free there is a, a link in the description box you can download it on your computer and you can type out different words on your computer print it out then you can use graphite paper or transfer paper or something and then transfer it onto your board what you're trying to do uh, you can also use like the uh, pencil lead technique on the back of paper to uh, and then trace over the front so that it transfers the pencil uh, drawing onto your whatever you're trying to write and so I do appreciate and love so many country loving friends that do love this style of lettering Once my board is completely dry, I give it a coat of this gloss varnish. Um, this is my favorite varnish to use. I do have it linked in the description box below. And uh, once that is completely dry, then I have these small styrofoam balls. Now I pulled out, this pack was uh, these pink and red and white one pack is from uh, Valentine's Day, but I only use some of the red and the white. And then I also sh uh, showed you a pack that I got from the Dollar Tree that had gold in it. And so I was just kind of sharing just different things. Anyway, I just used my uh, little serrated knife just to cut them in half. And then I hot glued them around the tree just to give it some decoration. Now for the top of the tree, what I did is I... Um, made a bow out of this ribbon. I think I got this ribbon at Joann's. And so I just made a simple bow. And then also I added some raffia and uh, made it a cute tree topper for the tree. Now to attach my bow to the top of my tree, I'm using my paper piercer. And since these boards are, uh, you know, like cardboard it was very easy to just uh, you know put a small hole in uh, this board and then what I did is I just used some of my wire and I just threaded through the uh, raffia bow that I made and then I twisted it uh, you know around the red bow and then I attached it to the top of the tree I just twisted the wire in the back and then um, to get the bow where it wouldn't cover up the uh, letters what I did is I just did some dots of hot glue and then you know everything laid nicely and it didn't cover up my letters 
Now, this sign would be cute for any country decor, but what I did with it is I made a candy cane swag wreath. This is an extra large wreath. That okay, I to make the form, what I'm using are two of these 21 inch candy cane forms from the Dollar Tree. I flipped uh, one around like this, and then where they meet, that's where I zip tie about three or four uh, zip ties so that they would it would be secure and then probably it measures about 29 inches before I put any of the mesh on so um, what I'm starting with are these three 10 inch mesh they all came from Hobby Lobby and uh, what I did is I cut them at 12 inches all and uh, what I'm going to do is use that burlap and the snowball uh, mesh burlap. I'm going to use those two together and then um, once I put two of those you know bundles on there then I'm going to alternate the white. So uh, right here what I'm doing is I'm cutting these at 12 inches and I will cut my bundles at 12 uh, you know and what I did is I used both rolls of this 10 inch mesh. I like the cruffle technique or woodland ruffle, uh, whatever one chooses to call it. But how I do it is I bend over one side, then I flip it two times, I clip it, I turn it around, bend over the other side two times or fold it over two times, gather it in the middle, and then I clip it. And so I'm doing that with both of the snowball burlap mesh as well as the burlap mesh. And then I put these two together and I cut um, 30 bundles of this snowball mesh with the burlap. So 30 bundles um, for this candy cane swag. And so the clips I'm using all came from the Dollar Tree. Those blue ones or the white came from uh, the laundry section. And then the small pink ones came from the crafter square section. Okay, so um, what I do is I try to, you know, uh, multitask. So I have all of my burlap bundles together. So what I've decided to do is put two burlap bundles and then I'm going to alternate a white just a one white uh, folding it over the same way making my cruffles and then I pulled out and I thought it needed a little more color so I pulled out my green and red um, window pane mesh that I got from craft outlet and that adds just the right amount for me for uh, adding some red and green to this mesh. So what I do is I, I did, I put two bundles of the burlap mesh on. I put one on the inner ring, um, like two rings, and then on the outer ring. And then when I alternate the white and the green, I actually put those on the middle ring. And so this is the red and the green window pane mesh that I was speaking about. And so that's what I did is I um, cut those out and then I'm going to do it the same way by bending over, you know, the ends, clipping it, turning it, turning it around, bending over the other side, gathering it in the middle to make my cruff. So I will just continue to go around this candy cane frame uh, and uh, just put, you know, the two burlap bundles and then I alternate the white and the red and the green. Now, um, honestly, there is a lot of mesh on this <laughs> wreath. And uh, so, you know, each wreath maker has to decide how full they want their wreath. And so this is what I did. I had 30 burlap bundles with the two 
snowball mesh and the burlap mesh and then I had seven white and seven green and red and so as I said there's a lot of mesh on this candy cane swag wreath anyway so just kind of give you an idea of how full you want your wreath will depend on how much mesh you need to cut Okay, now the fun part. I'm going to get into the ribbons. Uh, these came from Hobby Lobby or either Dollar Tree. I cut these at 13 inches. I dovetail all of my ribbons. These came from... Um, Ooh, the black and the white probably Michaels and then the red came I think from Sam's and then this the window pane I got from craft outlet the Christmas trees also from craft outlet these I got either from Sam's yes uh, Sam's Club or Hobby Lobby and uh, so these are how I uh, position my ribbons for my bundles and so I use my tiny attacher my little stapler it puts a teeny tiny staple in it and so I can streamline uh, my process. This is just something that works for me. Uh, again, every wreath maker is different. If you're interested in uh, this little stapler, you can uh, find it in my Amazon store. You can use a regular staple if the staples are not too big for you. Uh, that is one question that I do get all of the time. Uh, but I'm just kind of going through here and I take the extra time, whichever uh, sets of ribbon that I'm putting together I you know bend them over this is just something that helps me uh, because I have them all laid out so that way it kind of like keeps me straight you know every wreath maker is different I'm only here to encourage you and kind of share what process works for me every wreath maker has to find their own system and so uh, that's kind of how it all works out and so then what I do is I just alternate these four ribbons around the wreath um, honestly I did not put the ribbons um, in each pipe cleaner only because it was going to hide behind my sign and it was kind of a waste of the ribbon and it actually was full enough so I just kind of really focused on the outer uh, pipe cleaners of these of this candy cane swag wreath. Uh, green wire I think this wire came from craft outlet and so what I did is I used uh, the two holes that were already at the top of the sign and then I used my crocodile to punch two holes in the bottom of the uh, sign and then I used the green wire I just threaded it through and what I did is I just curled the wire and it looks like it's part of the wreath for me and uh, you know different wreath makers they attach their signs different ways but uh, if I have holes in it I just use the wire uh, to my advantage I just curl it and uh, you know it looks like it's part of the wreath then for extra decoration and pizzazz I have this glittery roping I think I got this at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section and so I just cut off pieces of it and I just uh, uh, kind of like loop it and attach it curl it around the uh, frame of the candy cane wreath uh, or the candy cane swag. And so I just put it in different places. Um, you know, I cut it. I choose to cut the rope only because I want to put it into certain places. And I only had this little bit. So I had to do what I needed to do in order to get the look that I wanted. So that's why I cut it. All right. To make a hanger for my wreath, uh, this wreath actually measures 36 inches long and uh, so what I like to use are this uh, or is this grapevine wire covered wire I get this in the uh, uh, wreath making section uh, like where the styrofoam section is and uh, I make a hanger for that and then to cover the back of my wreath so that everything is all nice I use these the woven placemats uh, from Hobby Lobby. I get them during the fall season. And uh, so since they're on sale now, maybe you can find them as well. But I like to use these because it has, you know, the holes in it. I just use 
uh, just, you know, the additional pipe cleaners or the extra pipe cleaners that I cut off. And uh, what I do is I just attach it to the back of my wreath and then everything is nice and, um, you know, presentable if the person has a, you know, glass door where you don't see the back of the wreath. Everything is nice and, you know, put together.